Here we go, guys. Uh, looks like I stirred up a hornet's nest. Uh, we're here in Stokesdale, North Carolina at Skywalker Roofing. Uh, Roofing Mythbusters did a video about uh, five months ago, corrugated metal versus standing seam metal. Um, gave you a lot of information. Uh, I kind of breezed through it and was a little vague on some things. And I was called out a lot of different times. And I, I have to be honest, I like it. Hey, we had a good time and uh, lots of comments. I, I need the feedback and um, I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong. And I think maybe a few times I was wrong, a few times I wasn't. So we're gonna go through those questions today and uh, figure out which ones were and which ones wasn't. And uh, we're gonna get a little documentation to back it up. So here we go. So I got a comment. Uh, this was from number one Jet Gator. Uh, I'm gonna read that to you because his wasn't the only comment, but it spurred a lot, maybe in excess of 50 to 100 different uh, comments and it, it only gets better. So number one jet gator, those rubber grommets are an issue when placed on the flat surface. If they are placed on the corrugated rise, there will be much less of an issue because the flow of water is much less on the raised corrugation. I was taught that that was the proper way installing raised slash corrugated panels. Just saying. One example, I had warned my sister in Kentucky of that issue so she could request that for the install. They ignored her request and she had several leaks since and that was within two years of installation. However, uh, your Cadillac locked in panel, those at least, the fasteners are covered and it's an awesome product. So um, we'd like to address uh, number one Jet Gator's comment and the, and the 50 to, to 100 more that followed right behind him uh, agreeing that uh, the screw should be in the raised panel, not in the flat panel. So uh, raised panel versus flat. Uh, we're going to go through that now. We're going to show why it should be in the flat area opposed to the uh, raised panel. Here are, I've got three examples of our manufacturers. This is Central State Manufacturing. Uh, I'm going to go over here to the fastener spacing diagram. Fastener pattern at eave and end lap. You can see here, each screw is placed right beside the rib all the way across. Now that's for the eave and that's because of high wind. Uh, you can see here, this is where the wind would come up and it would catch. So they want one actually right beside the ribs all the way across here, okay? And then the fastener pattern at the interior of the panel, that would be up in here. They want you to put one beside every rib in that area. So here, 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 and here, and here. Once again, that is not on top of the panel, okay? Um, I don't want to bore you with documentation, but I think it's very important that we know that we're learning from the right people. So, once again, this is commercial uh, construction metal product, CMP. Recommended fasting pattern every 30 inches on center. Screw, 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 and screw. That's out in the interior, okay? Right beside the panel. This is on the eaves and the ridge. It's right beside every panel. But once again, there are no screws in the top of the rib. Okay? This is the last one. I know I'm taking a lot of time, but it was a lot of you guys that had a question about this, so I'm gonna make sure we address it. Uh, screw fasteners at the eave, ridge, and end laps. Uh, it's, I hope it's uh, not too hard to see here. This one's a little different, but it's right beside of every high part. Never did they put it in the high part. Same thing here. Intermediate supports right beside every high port. Uh, down here, they, they do a fastening pattern from this place for one and three quarter inch nails, which I would never recommend putting nails through your roof uh, when you could put screws. For those, hey, believe it or not, they did put those through the high part. So if uh, you guys out there want to um, put something in the high rib, put a, put a nail in it but I, I'm not a big fan of nails in metal. Um, it just seems to work its way out and expand and contract and never holds. So I wanted to talk about this screw here a little bit. Uh, we were talking about over tightening screws, under tightening screws, or stripping them out. Uh, as I was putting this screw in, I didn't do either. It just didn't hit anything at all, this screw right here. Um, and I'm gonna show you how it just sits there and spins, watch. So it's just sitting there spinning, not holding to anything. At this point, I have to do something about this. There's a hole in this panel, 
and this screw has to come back out and wood has to be replaced under it. It was probably a crack in the plywood here or it could have been, if it's a one by sixes, it could have been a knot or something where it didn't hold. But something's gotta be done about this screw and for us, we would take this screw out, uh, take the panel up, fix the wood, and then keep going. Um, but this is kind of issues that I'm saying that you can have, and if it's not professionally done, you'll see this kind of, this will cause a leak later on no matter what you do if you don't fix it permanently.